And it's about the gambler. We were kind of, kind of just uh, reveling in it a bit in the, in the uh, karaoke version of the pre-party because everyone knows and loves this song. It was written in 1976, recorded by some other stars, but Kenny Rogers made it famous in 1978. He won the Grammy in 1980. And it's just sold and continued to sell. 30 million singles is a huge number. And as someone mentioned on the chat, kind of in the pre-party, there was a whole TV series based on The Gambler. Uh, there was a whole uh, casino, there is a whole casino empire based on The Gambler. I and mean, this is just a huge, and, and everyone knows the song instantly. Everyone knows the song. A lot of people, certainly of my generation, might remember a really, I think, famous and rather beautiful performance on The Muppet Show uh, in 1979. We'll just have a, a second of it now to indulge me. Train bound from nowhere, met up with a gambler. We were both too tired to sleep, so we took turns staring out the window. Just see some of the other, you know, some of the darker puppets. It's that kind of, you know, you've really never seen a lot of muppets like this. These really dark, I would say wise old books. So really just historic. And I'm going to propose wise show, wise song. So what makes the gambler so wise, so seminal? Well, let's, you know, let's go back to the, the, the philosophy of it. I, I believe there's three main focuses. You're out of aces. You've got to learn to play it right. That's the epistemological element of it. And the secret of surviving. I emphasize that in my karaoke uh, version, the knowing what to throw away and what to keep. That's how you act, right? That's the, eth the ethical element of it. So let's get into it and let's also do it and just take a moment and celebrate the song at the same time as we unpack The Gambler, one of the great musical pieces of, of modern history. And I think the best, I just can't think of a better song about finance. So let's, let's unpack it and let's celebrate it with many different interpretations. <laughs> Train down to nowhere. Met up with the gambler. We were both too tired to sleep. So we took turns staring at the window at the darkness. Boredom overtook us. He began to speak. All right, so what's important here? It's a warm summer's evening and it's a train bound for nowhere. This is emphasizing that this game does not change. The markets do not change. The rules are the same. The gambler is going to tell us about them. They're the same in 2017 as they were in 1917 and the way they'll always be. This is a, this is a, a story about essentials. And our search is the search that every investor must take. You know, and, and no, I've emphasized this as well. This is, this is a train bound for nowhere. We're all on this, this, this same train. And, uh, Jesse Livermore emphasizes this in, in reminiscences of a stock operator. There's nothing new in Wall Street. You know, whatever happens in the stock market today, it's happened. It's the same thing in the gambling world. This is the same game as it is and it always will be. So the gambler tells us, we took turns of staring out the window in the darkness. We've talked about this. When we look at the markets, I don't care even if you are experienced, they're chaos. Markets are this complete, you just got all these innumerable disparate concretes, you know? I mean, just look at this. I, I, this is, who cannot say, what the fuck, what is this? When I mean, you look at so much of trying to understand what markets are. So each of us are this individual. We're staring out the window. Like we've got money, we've earned money, we've got $10,000, we've got $100,000, got a million dollars. What do I do with it? I, I have to just stare out the window and try to understand the darkness in order to act successfully and rationally in it. And I talked about this last week. You know, that's us. We're just looking out into the universe, looking out into the market, trying to make sense of it, looking out into the darkness. Next, next version, next uh, stanza. Since I've been 
What's important here? Um, it's a great line. He made a life out of reading people's faces. This is an emotional game. This is an emotional business. You can see it on people's faces. And I think you can see it, it's, it's most specifically on your own. And it's why I don't, you know, we always say put your emotions aside. I don't think you need to eliminate them. I think you need to be comfortable introspecting them when it comes to investing. Because strangely, you know, you don't want to be an investor who's just totally tuned out of emotions. They're important. And Dr. Leonard Peikoff talks about this in, in a, a book uh, that was uh, his lecture course, which was published in 20, uh, 2012, that basically emotions kind of keep you in contact with reality. They're like a slap in the face. They put you, so I'm not saying just get rid of emotions. But the point is take being so emotional, take it out of your mind, to borrow a little visual from Whitney Houston, it shouldn't be in your mind, it should be your hand. Your emotions should be under your control. So think about that when you think about emotions and introspection. And a, a great quote from Bill Falloon, and the book is Charlie D. The most successful trader at the Board of Trade talks about people who survive have a low puke point. So if you're long at four, and that means at the price of four, if you're long, he was talking about bonds, if you're long at four, and you're long at two, and you're long at even, in this case, 30 means it's going down another point. If you're just long and long, it's going down, it's going down, and you're not even thinking about going out because as he's saying, hey, I can stay with this stuff together. It doesn't come back. So this is the point about emotions. If you're feeling fear, it's probably well serve. So it doesn't mean to just act on it indiscriminately. But as I even said in maybe the, the pre-party, think about setting stops, put a plan in place, have a low puke point. I can see you're out of aces. Out of aces means out of answers. So think about, go back to the story here. The old gambler uh, looks at this young guy staring out the window. He knows he's out of answers. And he says, and, and, and we all have, feel like that. I mean, how I've got all these indicators. I've got uh, the street.com and market watch and Honig and Kramer and my, my advisor and my own feeling. And how do I act? I've got all these indicators and the Dow indicator. So we feel out of aces. That's, that's us staring at this. And, and, and we all feel like that. So the, 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 the gambler, I think this is an important part too. He's a trader. You know, he's, he's, he's not saying, oh, let me just tell you what to do. He's offering a trade, which I think is a wonderful element of this song that's, that gets overlooked. For a taste of your whiskey, I'll give you some advice. And it's not a tip, right? He's not saying always bet on black like Wesley Snipes did or, you know, always double down or anything like that. He's going to give you some advice. That's something you can take to the bank. It's not a tip. Yeah. It's good advice. Lie down. Next, next section. Again, you know, this, I think, is it, it's kind of a throwaway section. He's a trader, you know? So, all right, I'll take the trade. And that's, that's an important part. And I love the fact he takes the cigarette and the light. The night got deathly quiet. His face lost all expression. That's a pretty strong... This is life or death. I've made this point before that I have lost... I don't want to be hyperbolic, but I mean, I have, I have really been in bad, 
I've really been in terrible places to have to learn some of these lessons. Uh, financial places and just emotional places. I've, I've been doing this since I've been in high school, essentially. And it has taken me, I mean, I could quantify it in therapy hours in the tens, maybe, maybe upwards of hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's just, this is of life and death importance. And that's why the gambler in the song makes this point. His face gets deathly quiet. And this is it. There is a right way to do it. It's taken the gambler his whole life. It's, he's been, you know, to finally learn this. There's a right way to trade. It's not subjectivist. It's not intrinsicist. It's objective. There's, you, if you want to do this, you've got to learn to play it right. You've got to learn to do it the right way. Okay, that's, you know, it's the sing-along, it's the chorus, it's, it's infectious, and it's, it's a value. You can't invest like a wild animal. You, you've got to know what you're doing. You can't just jump from stock to stock in order to succeed. You've got to act on principle. You've got to have a philosophy. That's why the whole point of what I'm doing is trying to teach you how to trade, how to invest, not what to invest in. Why is that important? Dr. Peekoff always approaches this as a why. Who, why, you know, this is important, for, frankly, for politics as well. Why should you act on principle? Well, as Dr. Peekoff points out, for the same reason you should jump out of the path of a speeding truck, because reality exists. And if you don't acknowledge that, you're going to be squashed by it. And it, does anyone want to give a guess on what stock this is? This is kind of recent history here. Here's Radio Shack. Radio Shack, this is, if you don't acknowledge reality, you will be squashed by it, and you'll watch a $22 stock go to zero. Why do you never count your money when you're sitting at the table? Why is that important? Because it's not about money. It's about positions. You're going to have losses if you, tr if you invest, if you make decisions. We're not omnipotent, so you're going to have losses. Losses are very much part of it's, it's not the case that the best investors are the ones that never have losses. So this idea of focusing on winning trades, it leads you to basically have bad ethics, to sell too early and to hold on too long. So don't, when you're in the midst of investing, this is wisdom, when you're in the midst of investing, you're not thinking about, boy, I'm up $500. I could, you know, I could uh, take a trip. I could do this or that. You have to think about the position you have and not the, the dollars. All right, let's talk about, a, uh, as I always say, this is the most important line of the song. This is, this is it. It's, it's not always picking the right stocks. It's not what you invest in. It's how you invest. It's in managing the portfolio that you have because you can't control reality. You know, all you can control is in what you're, it's in your portfolio. You're trading positions. So knowing what to throw away, i.e. the losers, knowing what to keep. Exactly right, Alan. Every hand's a winner and every hand's a loser. What's this, what's this one mean? It's that it's how you manage positions. You know, it's great to buy. If you have a, a stock that goes up, that's great. But I always, you know, give the example. Imagine, imagine the person who, I mean, I don't know, bought Apple at, you know, 10 and it went to 20 and he sold it because he had 100%. And then he said, well, I may... You no, know, it's how you manage positions. You don't. It's not the idea that you're right so many times, but as as you know, we've said time and time again, it's being able to fully exploit those winning ideas and keeping the losses small. Every hand is a winner, and every hand is a loser. It's up to you and how you act. Yeah. 
Come back to the wind. Crushed out a cigarette. Fade off to sleep. Somewhere in your darkness. Every people keep in its final words. I found the things that I've been through. You got to know. Somewhere in the darkness. We started talking about the darkness, right? We were looking out into the darkness. And we were just, before we had learned these lessons, we were just staring out into the darkness. And now we're back at the end of the song, and we're back in the darkness. And the gambler, the wise gambler, he broke even. We're all in the darkness. We're, none of us know what's going to happen. Not me, not Goldman Sachs, not... The president, not anyone else. We're all in the darkness. But it's it's our money. It's our choices. We've got to, the hardest thing about having money is you have to actually make decisions about it. It's our consequences. It's the gambler, the wise gambler. He breaks even. What does that mean in this context? You know, why doesn't the wise gambler is the one who makes a million dollars? He puts the odds on his side. You know, well, I've never made any claims about untold riches with investing anything that I do. Uh, my success has been uh, uneven, but long term. The idea is to put the odds on your side. And the gambler does that. He, he can break even because he has a rational philosophy. And that's it. It's, that's the ace you can keep. That is it. We're not on this, you know, None of us know what's going to happen, but having the right ideas, having the right philosophy puts the odds on our side. And what else can you have? What else is there? That's it. That's the ace that you can keep.